All right, Sam. All right, all right. Here we are again. Uh, I know, but you know, the, the, the main thing is wizards are fucking penguins. Oh, God. Penguins no. are getting fucked by wizards in Africa, Sam. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. We got to stop this. What's going on? Alex Jones warned us, you know. Did he? <laughs> Uh, probably this sounds like something that motherfucker would say oh, God. wizards are fucking penguins because <laughs> uh, oh, uh w- wizards of the coast has decided to go and they're like fuck you penguin random house we don't need physical books no more we're going digital to save the environment and our checkbooks <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I need hardcover books. What do you do it to me, wizards? People cannot be agreeing with this. And what a what a spicy thing to start the show on. Right? Uh, I'll tell you, spicy. Tell me that I can't have books. My wife built a bookshelf. Like normally, it would have been me to build the bookshelf, but like she took the time to build it and like paint it. Right, and it's right. structurally sound. And Hell I put my yeah. books there, and Hell they're like yeah, I got an entire D and D shelf that kind of dripples over into the next shelf. But like, uh, you know, some of the uh, things that I have, like the Rick and Morty set, and like uh, the other, uh, like my there, I have a few things that are too wide, so I lay them right. flat, and they're just like a little stack next mm-hmm. to some of her college textbooks, and it's just like, right, right. I, I, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna build a new shelf, and I'm gonna fill it with third party books. Oh so, yeah, that's right. Oh yeah. Grim Hollow, a Fool's Gold, uh, a Stibble's Codex. Um, Call of Cthulhu. Uh, yeah, Call of Cthulhu. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, you know, I'll get Pathfinder. I'll, I'll throw it all in the bookshelf. All of it. Look, uh, I'll go on like a little you shop that out here. Okay. Yeah. You see, you got the book. You. <laughs> that actually looks really cool. My first yeah, introduction Call, to Call of Cthulhu, Call of Cthulhu mm-hmm. was very different than like yeah. the. Uh, you know, I've, how they I've use, yet how to crack this bad boy open, and you know, for some mm. use. I would, I would love to. Sorry, oh. sorry, just, it's not relevant. Ooh, man, that's a great idea for like a big old Halloween game. We've been meaning to do one of those for years. Man, if everyone wants to do a Call of Cthulhu for Halloween, this is the spooky time of year. Spooky time. Spooky oh wait, be scary skeletons. The oh, song is what? canceled now. I can't cancel. Oh. The fuck you mean canceled? You know what? Let's start the show. We can get into all this stuff. And welcome to Dungeons and Talk Shows, the talk show that brings you Dungeons, News, and Homebrews. You know, I, I forgot, Sam, but I am your host, Orion. I am your host, Sam. Welcome back to another episode. Uh, w- one day, Sam. One day. You get, you've been doing pretty good, I think. I, I, I had a streak. I had a streak. You did. You did. You, did. But, you know... We can't always have monsters, you know, the things that go bump in the night. We do. We do have a monster for this episode. Oh, Almost okay. The people. Oh, no, no. Well, yeah. You got to put that out in front, you know. know people we, were a little upset when we didn't have one. For- uh, they were. They were. They're like, planes of existence, not in this house. I'm glad you guys are liking these monster segments. You know, uh, we've got some good feedback on that. And I'm really hoping that we get like a, maybe some uh, some some listener mails, like some emails or like a maybe if anyone has like a voicemail, like they leave like a little message and they want to have it played on the show. Maybe someone's yeah. got some questions, you know, it's our email. We yeah, yeah. If, if you got questions, Orion will make up an answer. Then Sam will give like a reasonable answer. <laughs> Why me? Because I want to reason- be nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a reasonable person. We can roll okay, on fine, the, fine. the nonsense dice. <laughs> okay, okay, cool, cool. So uh, uh, we will roll for reason, and yeah, the, yes, yes, we will. So, uh, what's the DC on that? Twelve. Right. Yeah, we'll say like a like a 
Well, it depends on the question, right? We'll, we'll each roll mm, a d20, mm. depending on the question. You yeah, know? yeah. Then, See who gets uh, closer the to the DC. Yeah. yeah. I guess we'll just say, you know, the closer you are to 20, the best and the better answer you have. <laughs> so we will each roll and our advice will mirror yeah. the, the, exactly. the amount rolled, you know? Exactly. So it, it, Nat won like oh wow it, it, your dm <laughs> really there, uh, right? killed your character <laughs> clearly on, the only solution is to fuck their mother <laughs> yeah yeah you gotta burn their house down obviously yeah and and uh, make it make it look like uh an accident yes yes oh, oh. <laughs> we don't we don't endorse arson but we certainly enjoy it I, I... shout out to the pyros out there yes uh <laughs> we do have a guest tonight he's running late but that's okay. We are willing to wait, and mm-hmm. hopefully uh, he'll be on here soon. So what would you like to get into first? Because we had a lot of spicy things come up a little bit, and the, <laughs> the coals open a little bit taste. Oh, about, dude. Uh, uh, our friend uh, Jen and starting some, some heat on Twitter. We talked yeah, about yeah, and, you know... Thing, like, oh. Dude, we we can hit the news a little early today. Yeah, Yeah. news stinger. You feel feel that? I'm pumped. I don't know. Hey, (laughs) ah, ah, I cut it off too soon. (laughs) Okay, so as as far as news, there's been a lot of debate in the Twitter space this week, Sam. Yes, I've I've I personally saw it on Facebook. <laughs> so I was, got imagine my surprise, <laughs> dude! You don't even touch our Twitter, but like, a, it went from Twitter to the Facebook to the Reddit's, and it's yeah, just it's like on I, find, I I'm feeling for Jen. She's just I mean I'm glad she's getting that word out there. Honestly, it's something oh, yeah. that I didn't even think bad about. publicity is still good publicity. So yeah, good on you, Jen, for marketing, and you know. <laughs> I, I don't know what her goal is, but I'm, you know I'm what? Uh, she she seemed nice she, enough on the show, you know. Well, she was trying to, uh, you know, get a PSA out there, but I, I feel like I mean, mm. it's not something that I personally thought of. That doesn't mean that someone else couldn't think of it, you know, that way. Mm. And if that is the case, then like you know, teach their own, I guess. You know. I'm so. I guess, uh, Sam, what what is this uh, big post that has uh, got people uh, riled up? Oh, yeah. I, could, I, can, I guess I could pull up the actual post. <laughs> I don't want us to become like a, <laughs> like uh, a drama well, alert. Situation a drama here. alert? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do like Jen, so hold on. Uh, she's all right. I, I think her heart's in the right place. I just uh, don't think uh, w- what she's I don't know actually. If I personally get it. Um, I mean, I just I I handle those kind of situations like you know differently as me personally. But you know, I know some people are very sensitive when it comes to racial stuff. And I mean, I I didn't, wasn't even aware that like people <laughs> could think of Halloween as you know being offensive towards like by just being in the spirit you know i i never Uh, saw it that way but i could understand i guess like let's see i'm i'm trying to like i'm scrolling through her thing and it's like i should have had this uh right ready beforehand but then it's just like damn (laughs) girl you you spend too much time on twitter you're posting all over the place Mm -hmm. Ah, but the 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 long and short of uh yeah yeah whatever uh, the, yeah. the long and short of it oh, yeah, is, uh, oh yeah. So she uh, wanted to make it abundantly clear in, in this Halloween month this year that right. it's a, uh, you know, saying spook or spooky during the Halloween season is unacceptable. End of story. It's like, well, and you know, naturally be aware that rubbed that it a lot of people the wrong way. Yeah, you know, people don't like being told what is and isn't offensive. You know. And, uh, I'm. I mean, it's, it's always it, a interesting topic to get into. I, I guess. I mean, it, it seems mm-hmm. like it struck me as a weird hill to die on. I mean, fucking yeah. Disney Channel has their Halloween spooktacular for uh, kit for four year olds. Yeah. Like, I. I mean, I. That's something that like I had never even like 
like i don't think i've ever heard anyone call you know somebody that in that way like i mean me being black especially like i didn't even know that that was like a thing but i mean yeah. not to say that it isn't a thing you know just because i haven't witnessed it but, I, you well know. you know what I, at risk of me being wrong i, I i'm always <laughs> like you know the the orion is very keen on finding out for sure so i i'm prepared to be wrong i don't think it's a problem so i'm going to ask a black man uh if it's offensive <laughs> uh sam is it offensive well okay so as far as i know to be as politically correct as possible the you know what she's referring to refers to the spook off uh with the tuskegee airmen you know the black army pilots and stuff so i don't mm. know if people are taking it uh specifically like racially offensive or if it's like oh now you know i'm seeing it as like an offense to them and like what mm. they did where i think that's kind of like a like why like it doesn't have to be like that. like i mean well, you, you should well like, you, you crack the case uh, wide open sam right there like, you said <laughs> air men as in military who's yeah. more notorious for roasting other parts of the military than I mean, people in the service <laughs> have you ever hear like a, a marine talk shit about the the navy air force and army all in the same breath and all have oh. like very unique ways of shit talking them it's just like dude so wait, this is interesting. There I didn't know that this. Okay, so hold on. So there was a book and a movie called The Spook Who Sat by the Door by Sam Greenlee, which depicts a mm. man treated as a token black person. We all know what that is. Uh, when hired by the CIA, the second is a 2000s book and 2003 movie called The Human Stain by Philip Roth. His novel tells a story of a professor at the New England College who was forced to resign after he calls two African American students okay okay so i mean that, that's just sounds like hyper yeah. uh, contextualized like it, yeah. you know like it, i if mean most it's always touchy when it comes to like racial things you know especially with words right it they all kind of right. hit personally to anybody individually you know right right so it's always kind of it's hard to say you know, especially to like I'm sorry, Jen, but like you are kind of like a white woman, so like how would you even know? I can understand if you're trying to like just raise awareness, you know, maybe that like maybe this could be offensive to someone to so be careful saying it. Yeah, yeah, like I, I don't know if it is. I guess it could be. Well, I, she, I appreciate I think, you, uh, you know, looking out. <laughs> I, I think what she uh uh kind of where she put her foot in her mouth, it wasn't the it could be offensive, just saying it is yeah. end of story like yo it feels like an out of the blue like for you to make that call no offense <laughs> like <laughs> uh dude uh, white women all over america want to make that call <laughs> i don't know i i appreciate the effort but yeah hey. no one asked <laughs> all right so moving on so what is yeah, so what is the penguin thing okay so Moving on to real D and D news, not D and D new, not D and D adjacent people we've had on the show uh, and their controversies. Well, I'm not which, always a fan of drama, so especially I, like social media drama. Like, uh, I, even you know what? I, I like, would agree. I'm not a fan of drama, but I do, however, find it hilarious. <laughs> it is pretty funny because that's not the only drama that's been going on this week in the D and D oh, sphere. Absolutely not. Go uh, off, man. No, no. Hear me out. Hear me out. Yeah, hey. How do you feel about weird wheelchairs in D and D? If someone wants, I don't see why not. Yeah. I feel like it's such a rare thing. Like, who the fuck goes up to their DM, and be like, "Hey, can I have a wheelchair?" Yeah, I feel like if you're asking, then there's probably a specific reason you want one. I don't see why not. You know, I could accommodate it. Sure, uh, it could be a character arc. I feel like it yeah. could be interesting. Um, but I feel like there's also there's two major connotations that come with it. Mm -hmm. One, uh, you you have someone that's in the game, right? Right, and uh, right. you you're, you got a player that comes up to you. Hey, I want to play a guy in a wheelchair, and uh, the DM's like looks at them and their right. ability to walk around, mm -hmm. and maybe you're slightly offended that mm -hmm. this person that's able to walk wants to pretend to be a person in a wheelchair. Well, for me personally, I feel like honestly, it would kind of be. What's, what's the word here? It'd be a little more endearing, right? Because it's like, 
Mm. Huh? You would rather, you know, play from a perspective of someone who is, you know, excuse me, disabled, right? Then play I, someone I mean, who is well able bodied. You know, there must be a reason, right? So I mean, I, I think it's a you at least got my attention. Yeah, I think it's in the same breath as a someone who wants to play a blind swordsman. Yeah, you know, right. Uh, it's it's awesome playing a character that has this challenge, and mm-hmm. now in game you must as, overcome as long this as difficulty. you are always respectful about. It. Yeah, for sure. Like, cause like yeah. you could do yeah. this, and then you could still be disrespectful to people who are, you know. But I mean, you know, there's there's like a good way to do it. I think. I mean, if that's the if you're going to be disrespectful and that's just the humor of your table, how do you guys like? Oh whatever, well, yeah, if that's, yeah, if yeah. That, that's your table. table. Do whatever you want, dude. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't recommend you know being in a party with somebody who is actively in a wheelchair and being like, "Well, here's my character who is also in a wheelchair." <laughs> that might come across <laughs> a little differently. That that like, might be tone deaf, but if you yeah. talk, to, if if you have a friend at the table that's got a wheelchair right. and you want to play a character that says right. a wheelchair, like, hey, let me experience a little bit of your struggle. Yeah, in a game. I mean, shit. Like, what? Honestly, what's the difference between like someone who wants to be in a wheelchair and having a character with a prosthetic, right? Or having I'd, missing I'd, limb? Yeah, or, the, I'd say there's you know? uh, no difference. Like, dude, I wanted to play a character once that kind of. Uh, has a strong resemblance to uh, the Irishman from uh, not not Irishman the the Scotsman from Samurai Jack the the one yeah. with the machine gun for a leg but instead Absolutely, of a machine yeah. gun it would be a <laughs> it'd be a uh, a heavy crossbow so mm-hmm. imagine like you you only ever have like one shot ready to go when you go into yeah. a battle so he's like he'll like battling uh, shield bashing cutting things up and then all of a sudden uh someone's coming up uh, the side and he just lifts his leg and just <laughs> pulls it right up there takes a shot yeah like, that was badass really as fuck right. i mean sure you're gonna have like less dexterity but mm-hmm. you make sacrifices for what you're I, doing and like it could be a way to flavor your low decks what bothers me about this i mean because it's like do you do you want people in wheelchairs to feel excluded now like do they have to play characters with like able working legs like like <laughs> like <laughs> now that doesn't feel you know what i mean now that made it weird like <laughs> i i think it's one of those weird things where uh i think the culture is like you got the old culture of everyone's just like i'm gonna play what i want and yeah, it's gonna be like, fun and then you got the kind of the new like political uh people that, that are kind of like drifting in because uh and of course they're going to drift into the hobby because everything is now made political like uh, uh everything all the yeah, time I mean, it's, it's kind of the same vibe as if you were like you know i like like you playing a character mm. as a woman right if i want to play mm. a character that was like gay right people would be like yeah, oh yeah. you can't play that character you're not a woman why not right like <laughs> no absolutely like dude uh I'd say that a prime example of this. Um, you ever watch uh, How I Met Your Mother or uh, mm-hmm. or Doogie Howser or any of the uh, early uh, 2000, a- any 2000s uh, show or 90s thing that had Neil Patrick Harris in it? Yeah. Yeah. Neil Patrick Harris is a gay man. And mm-hmm. a, a majority of the time when he's in a movie or a show, he plays the kind of dude that can take your girl uh, any day of the week no problem like fuck you what you gonna do about it i got yeah. maximum riz buddy like, absolutely and that is good acting when a gay man walks in he's like okay all there is all the ladies for days <laughs> meanwhile it, in his real life he'd, he'd rather have dick you know i mean and, and even in the movies i mean he plays like a metrosexual character like yeah like he, he's just i think it speaks more to like a person's ability to be able to play yeah. it up, you know, like, uh, for example, in anime, uh, most main characters, uh, like Goku or Naruto, you think they're voice acted by men because mm-hmm. they're not right. Honestly, because I, I feel like in order to do those type of things, to do it correctly, you have to have like a level of understanding that is like not only respectful, but it's like. I don't know. It's like deeper than that, right? Because like you have to mm. understand what it's like to be, to to embody what the struggle is like. And instead of being offended that these people want to like act, you know, with this disability, why don't you let them like be like, damn, bro? I appreciate you trying to understand what it's like to be me. Yeah, like, like 
or what it's like to like make me feel powerful. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I mean, mean like, maybe it, that's the case of like, I don't, I don't. What do people want, bro? What do they want from people? Like, <laughs> I don't fucking know. Like, dude, nobody's perfect, God. and I think like it. It'd be the same as uh, if I wanted to play a black person in D and D, and you wanted to play a white dude, like. It don't like, fucking matter. Where where does it end if you start trying to cut it off with disability? Like, yeah, let I mean, be what they want to be. Like, it, it's a slippery slope, dude. Just let people play what they want to play, yeah. as long as it's not unreasonable. Yeah, as long as you're not hurting anybody, making anybody uncomfortable. If you're yeah, in a, if you're you know. in a unique situation where like you're uncomfortable that someone is playing somebody in a wheelchair, that's cool. But that's a you problem. Like, <laughs> like I'm <laughs> like. Yeah, I mean, if, like I don't know. Unless they're specifically like being offensive to people, then they're just playing a game. Like I don't uh, know. And once again, this uh, brings me back to uh, my thesis statement: Who asked? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of like a "Who asked" episode. Like, honestly, have you ever heard of someone uh, having a wheelchair? Like, uh, okay, let's just throw out the wanting to overcome adversity. We right, got right. settings. Full of magic, teeming with it. You got magic spilling out of everything, and mm -hmm. you can't fucking heal your legs. Well, they absolutely could. I mean, it could also be a world where the magic isn't, you know, the healing magic isn't that advanced, or it's not that, you know, active. Or, it could you know also I like be, you no, know, maybe the character <laughs> yeah. prefers to be in the wheelchair, you know? Maybe, may, like, that could be mm -hmm. for an interesting character. Right. Or maybe it's like there is the magic in the world for that. Mm -hmm. However, there's a major problem where it's like the real world healthcare system mm -hmm. and magic is not used to heal the sick and the poor. Right. Like you have to have money to mm -hmm. be able to like, you know, See, that's why I feel like when, when all these things, people are like, Oh, this is racist. And D &D. This is offensive. It's hard to even say that because it all depends on the world that it applies to. So like, <laughs> mm. How can you have like, you know? Well, drow if your DM says racist, it's absurd, like, like <laughs> maybe that's because the DM runs the setting and they're like, "Dude, this doesn't yeah. work." Like your right. your character being in a wheelchair, if to do to be that in my yeah. setting, you would have to want to. And isn't that yeah. kind of a dick thing to do to just actively sit out there in a wheelchair because you huh? think it's cool? Like, I, I mean, you know what? That's, that's I if think they're fine, doing it but... in that way, you know, I suppose. But if, like, if for some reason, you know, and they have a good enough reason, be it, then why not, you know? It could be like that episode of Gumball where, like, they never wanted to get up out of their seat. So, like, when their family <laughs> was in danger, they uh, hopped on a couple of rolly chairs like I'm sitting in right now and just I mean, kind of, like, scooch themselves all the way <laughs> over there. It's like my brain immediately goes to, like, like an artificer, you know, who is like now Ooh. turned this disability into like his fucking like his chair. You know what okay, I mean? Okay, no, no, hear me out. Hear me out. So you go like a artificer with a wheelchair, and you take that armored artificer subclass. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you got a combat wheelchair yeah. with Basically, rocket launchers and jet now, boosters. You know? So and... you know what I mean? I feel like there's there's like the there's no real downside to like playing. With them. Like, I don't know. <laughs> if it's an artificer in a wheelchair, you know what? Fuck it. They were born without legs and they started engineering how to deal with this shit. And like, that's cool. They got this fucking mecha wheelchair. And like, I think it, okay, it, it, okay, I, I'm hype. I'm sold. Yes, I think you can it all play depends that in my game. on the situation, you know, like, and it depends on the DM. You know, everybody's different. Me personally, it would depend on why and what setting it's in, you know. For what reason, like... Yeah, I, I think I'd be... I'm generally the same with the games I run. It's like, yeah. cool, pitch whatever you want to me, but... Also, make sure you play it. with the other players. Yeah, and sell, yeah. sell me on it. Because if, like, it doesn't matter if I think it's fine, if my players are like, you know, I don't like that this athlete is playing a dude on crutches. Like, like okay. <laughs> Battle first of all, y'all need to check yourselves. <laughs> like... Because, like, why does that bother you? I don't understand. Like, <laughs> that'd be like, <laughs> oh, I'm upset that Orion's playing a woman. Like, why? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I... Uh, the thing is, I like playing female characters as, in video games. So, like, this is kind of branching out for me. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's all like, you know, as long as you're not like disrespecting women by playing them, which can be done. I feel like you're doing fine. None of the women in our party feel like you're disrespectful. So it's yeah, like, what's the like harm? The Charlie's Angels up in here. <laughs> right. They Yeah, you're like the concubines, you know? So like, <laughs> the traveling concubines. That kills yeah, me every party. time. Just like we <laughs> killed that guy. <laughs> exactly. You guys definitely killed that guy. <laughs> Why we're traveling concubines? Uh, whoa, my my lord has has really rewarded my my yes he has, and he didn't know what you liked, so he sent the three of us because he wasn't sure. <laughs> 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 we're a sampling platter. <laughs> mm. oh, that was so. All good. right, moving on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that traveling concubine gets me every 20 time. minutes in and we've talked about twitter whether wheelchairs or races oh fucking those uh, racist on. wheelchairs penguins <laughs> getting fucked by wild card wizards of coast sorry i keep saying wild card for some reason i got arc <laughs> on the brain <laughs> uh penguins are dying in africa sam what is going on in the world man also like if you guys heard that uh alert on your phones um be aware that you are now like a sleeper agent zombie so ah damn the russians got us again yeah man good luck out there (laughs) it's a dangerous time to be uh, to be a person it's a dangerous time Uh, hey, here's a quick question for you, Ryan. So I just saw someone ask this um, in like a comment section on like one of our discords. And, you know, what mm. what is your favorite example of like a found family trope? A found family trope. Yeah. So like a like a chosen family, you know, mm. uh, I, I want to say a circus a circus. Because okay, my brain immediately goes to like a Lilo and Stitch, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, because, like, yeah. Ohana means family, and that's, like, an adopted pet thing, and yeah. that's cool and all, but at the same time, I am irritated with people who are Ooh. all like, oh, uh, hey, uh, my, my animal's my family. Like, please, <laughs> pet parents, I don't care that you view oh, yourself as a pet parent. Just alien. stop telling me you're a pet parent. Please, like, I have four fucking kids. This is downright offensive. You can go fuck yourself. Yeah, he pretended to be a pet. This boy was an alien. <laughs> yeah, like uh, Stitch straight up has an IQ uh, higher than the entire nerd militia combined. Okay, you're right. Oh, yo, <laughs> dude. Oh, I, I clicked on the wrong thing because oh, yeah. entering in is Lord of Ring. Ah, welcome, welcome. He's here. Welcome, welcome to the show. We have been rambling on about uh, racism, yeah. wheelchairs, penguins getting fucked by wizards, and I it's am... a wild time, sir, but you're just Look, in time. I'm sorry to our listeners. This episode has been a mess of filth already. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Wizards of the that. Coast decided to cancel their contract with uh, Penguin uh, Random House, the publishing company. So uh, they told them to fuck off. And uh, we're just like, why? Uh, Because I like my hardcover books. How dare they, man? How fucking dare Mm. they? <laughs> this has definitely been a popcorn episode, man. Ah, oh, dude. There's, there's it, tea to be time. spilled. There is. <laughs> oh, it's it's a spicy. It's a spicy. But you know. <laughs> so why don't you introduce yourself to everybody for those in the audience that don't know who you are? I have made it. I, yeah. 
that checks out. Uh, we've known each other for about three years, and we first met uh, singing uh, on the machines. Ah. Wait, 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 wait. Did I hear you say penguins getting fucked by uh, yep, wizards? Yep, there'd be a, a whole lot of stuff. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so a, whole, a whole lot of Disney, uh, a little bit of some, some of the Backstreet Boys, because, you know, uh, the, the Backstreets just keep on coming. Uh, you know, they wouldn't let us have any uh, music or phones or anything, because, like, sh- all this proprietary tech you and said that, people and taking it, pictures my, of my, all the uh, bugs that were to, getting into the, the swabs popcorn? at the COVID swab factory. So uh, like, they didn't want us exposing that. Oh, right, right. You would never. Well, well this was the well, height I'm of the glad, pandemic. I'm so the in order to keep us from exposing all the dirty yeah, practices that were going on episode. when uh, Puritan was uh, making all these swabs for everybody in the height of the pandemic, uh, we it's weren't allowed to have phones on the uh, production floor. So while we were, uh, in order to distract ourselves for these 10 hour plus shifts, uh, we would sing so together. My name We'd, is so, Lord like, of Ring. But it helped entertain us as well as other people, you know, keep morale many up different because names. working machines and making swabs all day is fucking and depressing. I've known Orion for pro- three, four years now. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah. because they knew that we would sing the whole time. The few times that we were together uh, was when uh, it would be like a, a weekend shift and just singing all the time yeah, we were, and when we, we weren't we singing be we'd singing, be talking D and and uh, uh nerd acapella shit. style uh, make a man out of you from mulan yep mm. I- i'm actually uh We've been talking about uh, starting some D&D parodies for the YouTube channel, so look forward to anyone who loves a good D&D parody. Look forward to seeing some of that from uh, myself and Lord of Ring. Uh, we might, I might be a little off-key, but he's definitely on point, so hoping for the best right there. Oh. Nice. Hmm. Well... Oh, absolutely, because, uh, you know, we got to have that full range. I'm kind of like more of a tenor uh, kind of uh, singer. Yeah, tenor. Uh, You got your tenor, your alto, your soprano. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah, you know, we got all all those things. Yeah, the only sad part. Also, uh, Lord of Ring will be joining us for the One Piece campaign that's coming up that I'll be DMing. So oh, yes, that's exciting. <laughs> we can definitely talk about that more on her. Uh, <laughs> he talked me into it. He did. He did. I didn't want to do it. I said, "Don't put me in the DM seat again." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we definitely have, talk about that more started, on our uh, social uh, media. Once I became stuff. the materials mm. handler, we will be streaming that and. Uh, Sydney not necessarily for machine. entertainment purposes and whatever but i would walk trust by, me with lord of ring here uh, on the scene it will be entertaining <laughs> and yeah with the players you're set up to have oh my god oh if he plays the musician class for that I- i'm hyped look you're gonna have uh, as far as you know you're gonna have me you're gonna have uh neferet from our grim hollows game uh we're, we're gonna be having heshi from last week's show heshi yeah that'll be a fun one how many people are you That's hoping to have for a full if party? It's, um, if I'm because able it's to one do piece and you kind of have to have a full like crew to the manage ship. Base uh, my ideal party size thing. when I tr- for traditional D&D is four to five. But I've run campaigns with six people before, so I will allow my maximum yeah. to be six. Mm-hmm. If things are... And if things are fluid and uh, functional, and I might, uh, I might allow seven. Mm. Right. So what you're saying is we may have potential listener spots for this One Piece game. You know what? If one of our listeners wants to join in on a One Piece campaign, I just want to I'd be willing there. to it take them idea. up. Now, if anybody but... out there wants to hang out with the boys in a <laughs> genuine one shot or no, it's more <laughs> one no, it's like a it'll be a overarching campaign. Oh, overarching campaign. Nice, nice, nice. Anyone wants to join us for a campaign? 
in the one piece setting let us know yeah mm -hmm. Well, the, the the first mate is actually uh, more of a the way this uh, PDF is built. It's the first mate's more of a appointed thing, not necessarily a traditional ship role, because like uh, the, the ship roles come with it benefits be towards fun. those skills. So like a first mate doesn't exactly have a, a skill set to work with. Yeah, I haven't looked too much into it, but I feel well, like I would probably pick like navigator or like archaeologist or something. Mm. Or Cook. Cook would go crazy, too. Mm. Oh, come on. Uh, cooks in my games are always fun. Yeah. You, you need... Ooh. Oh, yeah. I some heavy do... Brook inspiration there. See, uh, I, I wonder if, if anybody else is listening out there uh, is an artist, and, you know, we would happily pay you. Um, you know, to get some uh, art we made are our... known to do commission work uh, every now and then. I would love to have a commission made. I I have, I have an idea for my character to be sort of a uh, angler fish fishman. Ooh, you know, yeah, that's, that's strong gonna be boy. Cool, cool looking features, kind of like a rip jaws vibe. Oh, from I, know, I know yeah. you need the captain. I, I, I love know. it because hit me up captain. if you're interested. A cook. A navigator. I, I love it because Sam a is doctor, a musician, he knows nothing about one piece. So he's nope. going into it with fresh eyes. <laughs> Not a damn thing, man. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yeah, something about the devil fruit. I know they can't really have them. Well, they can. It's just that Well yeah, but they huh. like Yeah, they can't swim anymore, right? Speak. Yeah. <laughs> but just because Yeah. Yeah. But just I've because heard. Orion says <laughs> and, you know, uh, I'd be good at the musician. I'm definitely I don't know choosing what that musician even like with how because good the even I'm are, gonna be the humming that? swordsman of the crew. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yes. But if I am a, if I if I am choosing a fisherman, I do like you know fish species. Like I, I immediately think of like you know, and especially I think of like deep sea fish, like mm. you know, moray eels, angler fish, and like sharks and shit. You know, Ooh. so it, like it would, cool I feel stuff. like it'd be a personal that hit cool. to lose the ability to swim. I mean, I don't, I can't swim. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Well. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Jinbe? Uh, he, uh, he's, yeah, he's this uh, oh, whale shark uh, okay, fish so man. Uh, he, Sam, he's cool. He kind of like mans the helm uh, for, for the crew. Uh, he, real, he's he's a real like a uh, monk bruiser nope. of a motherfucker. They, he just comes in. They can't. Uh, big like, blue boy. But yeah, big blue boy. Can he still he's through, he can water, throw so shoulder throw uh, water at people. Like, of drowning, like, okay, I'm just gonna but take this curry he and just eats throw the it. Devil fruit. Like, All that's gonna happen is fucking he'll shit. He'll just die. Die. Interesting. Yeah, I think I was gonna go with the. Uh, they can't uh, swim. Loser. So if you eat a mm. devil fruit and you're a fisherman and you're over the Marianas Trench, you're going seven miles down. A robot. What? <laughs> All I'm saying uh, he doesn't, is that. No, no, he he, he hasn't seen any of it. Fruits were real. I'd be perfectly fine. Like I said, because I am he afraid knows of the ocean. nothing about I have one. Piece, so it's gonna it's gonna be fun. <laughs> no, don't well, educate him. Hold on. Well, we do have a show here. All right. This is a show, <laughs> sir. <laughs> some of our fans want more than one piece they they want some dungeons and the dragons some people come uh, here to get away from one piece <laughs> <laughs> they came to the wrong show what you should do is base your character <laughs> off of the one Quick, piece change of subject uh, 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 how did you get into D, D lord of ring jinbei
He's a real B. Okay, then that would Yeah, as long as you don't make yourself look like a robot, you'll you'll be good. Hmm. It's it Frankie. Oh yeah. From have you gotten that part? <laughs> oh Let me edumacate you, son. Right. <laughs> There's, there are dragons. Mm. <laughs> okay. Okay. Big ranger energy. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, actually, that's a funny story. I was, it was when I was in the army, I was stationed in Fort Drum, New York. One of the guys that were, what was that? That were in my unit, he was in a different platoon. Oh, Dragonborn. I started, yeah, I became there, friends with actually, him and I started there hanging are half out dragons and, and there then are there was this one like weekend, it was a long things. weekend. And then there's we also like, like Friday and a Monday off. And like, there's all kinds of shit. Friday night, me, him, his wife, and... Okay, so a guy, he's dragonborn born barbarian. Part of the unit and someone from my same platoon decided half barbarian, you know half We're dragon. That's right, one raging weekend. scaly Friday boy. Night, yeah, we damn. was drinking and gaming. Oh, yeah. Saturday was more gaming. Saturday night we drank a little more. Sunday night, Sunday night next uh, uh, Sunday we watched a bunch of anime. Sunday night, we decided that uh, they decided they were going to do Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. So I'm like, what's Dungeons and Dragons? So they explained it. And I'm like, this shit sounds like fun. So me being me and loving Lord of the Rings, I decided to base my character off of Legolas and Aragon put together. So an elven ranger. Hmm. And- and there was a uh, dragon halfborn, or is it halfborn? Or dragon, just dragonborn? He was half. He was half dragon, half barbarian. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Well, all I know is he was half dragon, half barbarian. Then, yes. <laughs> then there was. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But it gets better. It gets better. There was a wizard, and then okay. there was okay, a. Okay. It was kind of. How, how did he explain it? He was an assassin, <laughs> but he was a druid slash. He's not that crazy, right? Uh, mate, was it just floating, or did could he fly? So, anyways, we're going oh, through. He going can fly, through, and <laughs> you know, it's pretty we get good. to the first boss. Granted, I didn't know what I was doing, so I'm just like, I'm going. How I'm was gonna he going go invisible? In for a um. Chopping oh, blow just, with okay. my okay. Well, he would he would reappear after like one attack, and <laughs> I managed <laughs> to crazy. nick the, a disappearing rage machine a artery in the barbarian leg, with rage. and I cut his hand off, <laughs> and then the wizard decides to make the draconian yeah, barbarian cool. invisible. That's always a really good combo. While he is uh, raging, it's a hilarious combo, really, and I I. I think that's great to have as like a early and, or first uh, D and D experience because like, it the, shows you like this, the absurdity the fight goes on of the hobby and like it, it certainly is three absurd. or four turns, right? And um, mm. at one point, 
my first exposure was they uh, decide very to very different. Make <laughs> the barbarian invisible and float. I heard the hey, DM heard that and he's go. like, "Oh God!" He didn't. He he didn't know how to respond. Right. He could fly. Always the body. As you do. And he was invisible. And every time he went invisible, oh, yeah. the barbarian would rage. Oh, yeah. It was one of the spells the wizard had. <laughs> oh, like uh, like for Craven Edge from uh, the box. Right. Marketing. But the fat. Huh. Pretty classic the, idea. That, that's a very different comparison than what I was going to say. Oh, is it? It, just the yeah, fact that, that it was a barbarian was turning range. invisible and I was then gonna, I was gonna compare after, it or going to a berserk. cock it was like, cause like it, the more blood yeah. it, the bigger it gets I, it's just a dick shaped sword yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <And> the, <laughs> he'll agree to anything and the imagination like combinations the shaft, that you could like... do. <laughs> and then... Big old hammer. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, <laughs> it comes to my turn. <laughs> and I I got excited. Because I exactly. dealt the killing blow. Which part is the you bludgeoning? Got, you, got a, <laughs> you got a piercing edge and where you can turn one it around. Re- one of like the rewards. Like, kind of like a mace. Because <laughs> after I killed it, I had to choose if I the was enlarging. leaving uh, the body. I, I've been told I can be looting. quite sharp sometimes. Well, I, just, I, I decided to loot. She said stop poking me. <laughs> I got the, bo- I got the uh, boss's Sam, vampiric we, sword. Quick change of subject before it goes any further. What's the monster so for the week? Every- Every oh, time yeah, I yeah. cut something, you know, speaking of uh, it sucked getting the poked, blood so in, no and got bigger. We're talking it's kind of like that sword. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no head, huh? Yeah, uh, I'm like, out. Oh, I'm man. done. Like that Fuck sword. This shit. I'm going home. <laughs> like this, my mom says we can't be friends uses. no more. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I need an adult. All right. <laughs> well, I feel What's like a, a lot of hand people saying? know. Yeah, no, I feel like a lot no, of people at least no, no, know no. what a Dilla hand is, right? A headless horseman. As, a as if you say that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, no, night, no. You know, holding mm. his fucking his head in one hand and a severed spine in the other. You know, mm. a horrifying creature rooted deep in the Celtic and Irish folklore. Jesus. The hand is often portrayed. <laughs> As I said, as the headless horseman, Wait, which, a black horse which carrying the, the head under one arm, the sack, Despite... like a football. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, th- that's yeah. the one. I am going to mention that a little bit later, but yeah, Sleepy Hollow is a prime example. Oh of, God, you know the headless horseman. You know, um, and you know, despite not having, you know, the head, oh, oh uh, they God. are said to have supernatural vision, able to see across vast landscapes and through the darkest nights. The head is also said to have the texture and color of moldy cheese or still dough, with the malicious <laughs> grin stretching from ear to ear. Yeah, man. Uh, the why? Elohan uh, allegedly carries a whip made from a human spine, and often carries a uh, often pulls a wagon adorned with funeral objects, such as candles. Uh, and skulls covered with dried human skin. <laughs> when the Elohan stops riding, it I'm is said my that someone is leaving. about to die. He calls out the person's name, drawing out their soul oh, for God. their impeding death. That's the most metal thing I've heard all day. It's he just throws into town, fucking puts his head on his waist, I get, or tucks it in his arm, pulls out the scroll or whatever. He's like, Orion. He fucking uh, it's got this straight out. The spine whip, though. The yeah, spine, the spine whip. whip. That's he has, so fucking metal. Imagine you're just like, you look through your window, you see this rider walk into town, you know. <laughs> so it's the guy from so it's the guy from Sleepy Hollow. Yeah, bruh. He has some, definitely <laughs> like some fuck around and find out energy. Like... <laughs> 
However, mm. you know, check this out. So Delahan is not also not always a mounted horseman. They may also appear oh. as a headless coachman who drives a horse-drawn carriage. <laughs> so it works. you can fit more bodies that way. You can fit more bodies that way. You know, and usually I believe when they are, you know, a coachman, they are often carrying a death coach. Um, you know, the kind oh. of coffin. <laughs> mm. to kind of show someone is going to die <laughs> oh yeah like an old school hearse yeah exactly like an old school hearse right mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I also believe to have you know, a the the Dillahan is known to just kind of like walk into town, you know. Oh, shit. Dressed Did they in, like, have the an episode like armor. that in Supernatural? Uh, I'm I sorry, I didn't mean to so, cut you off. Yeah. I just like no, I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah, he just kind of walked into town, or um, I think you might be talking about the 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 death, the four horsemen. So, I was, um, which mm, is mm. you know the same kind of idea, really. You know, he is a horseman that kind of embodies you know death. Um, yeah, I'd lock all the doors, mm. put salt around. <laughs> Sorry, <everything. laughs> I'd go full supernatural. Yeah, it's probably the one we were talking about. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, ah, nice. Okay, I. I- Look, man, that's so true. You have got both of them. Shit. Mm. The supernatural. <laughs> they pan over. It's supernatural. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> the squad pulls up. Look, <laughs> I I honestly don't care how he gets someone's yeah, soul. If we were all living on the same block, yeah, out of room, room. we all it's looked over. out the window at the same time. It's not out of safe. nowhere. You'd hear so carry on my wayward <laughs> son. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, if Scooby Gang's involved, it might not be a monster, but if it's a movie, it's it's definitely a monster. Yeah, right. Look. Yeah. So it's getting into the real world lore here. Around midnight on certain Irish festivals or feast days, this wild and black yeah, horseman, horseman may be observed riding a dark and snorting steed across the countryside. Dullahans are headless, and wherever one stops, a mortal's death soon follows. Since, since we're he, stop here talking about the horse for the door of the house and shout the name of the person about I, to die, drawing forth uh, the soul on the I call. saw a meme you may also today. stop at the very spot where a person was. And... So and got, it was I got a, um, a short passage a from of a gas WJ station with story t- the Scooby Gang's mystery machine. Mountains in County Down. And <laughs> the ghost found a cool little quote it. from him. And uh, it was actually, actually, how real yeah, this shit this guy to be had for these seen two to show up. You know, so this is a real recount. <laughs> I seen the Delahan myself. Stopping now, on there the was a third the vehicle there and it was... and Money Scout late one evening. Just as the sun was setting. It was completely headless, but it held up its own head in its hand. And I heard it call out if a it, name. If there was a third my hand across in my that ears photo, in case and it was just hitting, and it ended up so being the 67 Chevelle, I looked again, I'm leaving it was town. gone. But shortly afterwards, there were a ba- there was a bad car got, accident on the very hill. If you've got the, the Winchesters, man, the Ghostbusters, had been and his the Scooby gang, the I'm out. Calling. Those who watch from their windows see him pass are rewarded for their pains for by having a basin of blood thrown in their yeah. faces yeah. or being struck blind in one eye. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, sometimes, allegedly, just seeing a, a horseman can be kind of a an omen for maybe not a death, but a tragedy. You know? Okay, makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. And, like, I don't know about you, but part of me likes <laughs> to believe that, you know, maybe the old world, like, uh, the veil between, like, this yeah. world and like uh, the 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 world of the fae and the supernatural and the spooky shit like mm-hmm. you maybe like a that a little barrier used to be a lot thinner back in the day kind of like a how like in Inuyasha for example that uh, they they had demons all over the fucking place in the oh, in yeah. feudal Japan then you go to future J- Japan and you couldn't find a demon to save your life <laughs> yeah yeah true. So it's like, yeah, oh, I mean, it's, I think it's the whole overtime, you know, industrialization of man, 
the world gets less and less natural. We pull more and mm. more from the magic, you know? Yeah, like the, just the magic kind of dissipates as things I'd become so. like more concentrated and like belief right. goes away. So like, yeah, maybe a lot of it does kind of, I like to believe that it comes from I'd, belief itself. And you and know, that, that's, that's yeah. why, sorry, I didn't cut you off here board. either. Uh, That'd be but, me. Um, I feel like that's why you know a lot of time you find story like this taking place so long ago you know and they're like well why don't we have this stuff nowadays it, i mean it'd be like that movie maybe Ghost people do Ship. and they don't He's, you know they don't report he it swings his whip around it. it's, it's like that metal yeah. wire that cuts everyone in the ballroom yeah. in half yeah i feel like the magic is gone the veil is you know not as permanent or not as uh it, impermanent as it was before you know as malleable mm. as maybe it was back then mm. maybe more so now who knows you know i don't know but right. right. here here's a fun theory if we're going to dive into those kind of ideas yeah what if like uh you know there's a section of like a uh, two different dimensions and then mm. there's like some overlap and over time as nope, the done. expansion of our universe uh, goes <laughs> mm -hmm. out and like we're just kind of going in a different direction so that overlap is no longer overlapping the way that it was at that, that at that yeah. point yeah you know turn in like my a, dice. Uh, all those uh, supernatural things like no longer is present and it's like <laughs> okay well, we got stories of dragons for centuries like mm -hmm. maybe they belong I to a different scared. reality and like all of a sudden, i mean you know, you know slowly as uh, things like drift further and away but from these yeah. uh, two universes that we're uh, touching we're out of range yeah, but it could be i mean i always believe in like the you know the mandela effects you know the blend over from other realities mm. you know stuff like that i i honestly feel like in my belief a lot of like mythologies and stuff probably that you know probably creatures and entities blending over or traveling here for some purpose you know yeah because like look my biggest thing with all of this is like these cultures got so many similar stories. They've never talked to each other, never seen each other's structures or anything. How are they so similar? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and it makes for good stuff for a D and D campaign. Like man. that could very well be like a plot hook, like universe overlapping, it. and like a lot of the magical beings in a world being slowly ripped away. And it's like, okay, well. I have family that's all magical and I'm like not magical. So, oh, holy shit. My, my family's being ripped away from me. This is a I world mean, is shattering kind of the event. idea of like, if you take the idea that the Feywild, right, you kind of begin to pull it away from the material plane. Mm. That's a catastrophic, like, that's, that's yeah. wrong. Like, yeah, like <laughs> magic, uh, a lot of magic comes from the Feywild and oh, it's an uh, interaction with the material plane. Oh, so, no. Imagine an entire setting where the Feywild is slowly being ripped away. Right. Or like the ethereal, you know, is becoming detached from the material plane. That'd be crazy. And the material like, plane being popped out. It's like, okay, now you're losing access to uh, the uh, the Shadowfell, what? The, the, the ethereal. The divine realms, you know? Yeah, like, dude, that that makes for like a whole lot of strange shit. Yeah, you can get real funky with it. Anyway, what are we talking about here? Dollar hands? <laughs> <laughs> Drifting away. <laughs> like uh, so, the cosmos. <laughs> you did mention uh, Sleepy Hollow a little bit earlier. So, of course, there's no way I could not talk about Sleepy Hollow here, right? Mm. So for anyone who doesn't know what Sleepy Hollow is, it's I'd an 1820 short story by the American Nazgul author from Washington Lord of the Rings. Uh, contained in his collection of 34 essays and short stories titled The Sketchbook of Jeffrey Crayon Gent. <laughs> Crayon Gent. Creating Crayon the idea Gent. of the Headless Horseman, believed to be a 19, sorry, 1790s Hessian soldier L like who I was said, decapitated by a cannonball in an unknown nameless revolutionary battle who rides forth to the scene of battle and nightly quest of his head, supposedly as the commander-in-chief of all the powers of the air. Um, so, hmm. yeah. So this is a spirit that was fucking domed by a cannonball who is looking for his head, right? <laughs> gold? It's <laughs> really crazy. Sweet. I'm, I'm um, making some The gold origins armor of the Dullahan are not known gold, for certain, obviously. You know, putting gold caps on my teeth. But he is thought mm. to be the embodiment of the ancient Celtic god, him. Krom Dub. Dub? Dub? I don't know how you say it. Mm, or the Black Krom. 
the black crown was worshipped by the prehistoric king Tiger Moss, who ruled an island about 1,500 years ago, and who legitimized human sacrifice to heathen idols. <laughs> you know, what? being a fertility Actually, god. Screw that. Crom, no, no gold black armor. Crom, no gold teeth. The man melt human the gold lives down each and my year, The most favored it. method of sacrifice being decapitation. Mm. The worship of Crom continued in Ireland until the sixth century, when Christian missionaries arrived from Scotland. They denounced all such worship, and under their influence, the old sacrificial religions of Ireland began to lose favor. Nonetheless, mm. Crom was not to be denied his annual quota of souls. It took on a physical form, which became known as the Dullahand, or Far Jaroka, meaning dark man, the tangible embodiment of death. Hmm, that's very interesting. I and it's so. just, it's just <laughs> like the Christians to come in and start uh, throwing all the, the, the druids away, like yes. Wizards of the Coast, trying mm-hmm. to, talking about getting rid of druids from the magic cards. Exactly. It's just like... How it's like wizards, they? what are you doing? Uh, um, I, I'm beginning to think they want to ruin their entire stock price in I'm every sorry, way doing? possible, so that Hasbro will drop them and sell them to someone who gives a fuck. Think, maybe, maybe that is. Maybe they're trying to tank it. I could Dude, see it, I guess. If they tank it, can we buy it? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> I mean, us? No David fucking chance. <laughs> <laughs> We're poor. <laughs> so they're. As far as I'm aware, the only um, official stuff for Dullahan is in the Ravenloft book. Um, you can go check that oh, out on cool. D&D Beyond for 30 bucks. I oh, was not about to buy not. it, however. <laughs> and just download the PDF for free. <laughs> yeah. Me, I went to the 5th edition SRD and I found you know this sheet for a Dullahan to kind of tell you guys about. It's about so, time, Sam. <laughs> Yes, yes. So we got Dullahan being a large fae, as you can assume. They uh, are believed to be creatures of the unseelie fae, you know, the soldiers of the fae that go and do about the bidding, you know, collect souls as it will, Mm. you know, with fairly decent stats. (laughs) And for good reason, you will see. Uh, So we talk about we got strength of a 19, dexterity of an 18, constitution of a 20, Intelligence of a 13, wisdom of a 15, and charisma of a 17. Oh, uh, they are oh, also a <laughs> they are also a lawful evil, you know, being. So they're, you know, they're about that business. <laughs> I would think lawful neutral. I am surprised with lawful yeah, I evil. Good. Yeah, I mean, I guess it could also be, you know, if they were cursed, you know, the creation of their, you know origin you know if they're working oh. for something you know i guess i could kind of see it maybe that they gave it that alignment so that players would stop trying to talk them out of killing yeah, yeah. trying to talk Ooh. out of dullahan good good luck <laughs> good luck yeah I'll tell you. Just, just putting that alignment in there okay there is no negotiating I just had an idea. Yeah. very 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 unlikely <laughs> Uh, so we go into damage resistances and immunities here. We got bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks, you know, and the immunity to necrotic. We also got the condition and immunities with charmed, right, right. exhaustion, frightened, uh, true sight of 60 feet, speaks common, elvish, and sylvan. And I actually have a CR idea. 11. It's kind, kind of off topic, but yeah, that's a and going that's easily back to the one tier, piece, uh, instead like for someone who's capping to be out like, uh, like a sniper, you could probably with instead a tier of two using party, a pistol, if, you, a slingshot, if they were really strong, handle a rifle, it, but this is like a anything, tier three kind of enemy. A sling. Yeah, I mean, wait till you get into the uh, the, <laughs> the feats here. So we got baleful glare when a creature can see the eyes of a Dullahan, severed head. See the eyes of Dullahan's severed head starts its turn within 30 feet of the Dullahan. Dullahan can force That's it to true. make a DC 17 wisdom saving throw if it is not incapacitated. On a failed save, the creature is frightened until the start of its turn. All you gotta do is While knock frightened, out. the creature must take the dash action and move away from the Dullahan by the safest available route. A doomed creature that fails its saving throw is restrained while being... F- oh, is restrained instead of being frightened. Unless surprised, the creature can avert its eyes to avoid the saving throw at the start of its turn. If this creature does so, it can't see the double hand until the start the of its next out, turn. Take all when of it can loot. avert its eyes again. If the creature looks at the double hand you in the meantime, it must it. immediately make the save. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's how I would do <laughs> so it. So you can avert sniper. your eyes, but you're not looking at this creature now. 
<laughs> that that becomes a problem. Yeah. All right. Next up, we got Relentless Advance. Moving through difficult terrain doesn't cost a Delan extra movement. And the Delan can move across the water as if it were harmless solid ground. Dude, that's badass. That's yes. menacing oh, as fuck. That's badass. <laughs> Dude, oh. imagine like you got a ship full of people. They're out oh, on the water, shit. and this dude comes rolling up on your ship, ready yeah. to take some souls. <laughs> Maybe your party like thinks they're gonna escape by getting onto a lake. Yeah, you guys like run off the path, get in the water. <laughs> you Spine in, whips the hull, rips it wide open. Oh my god! In all honesty, yeah. if I if I if I'm able to get like Rip. a good enough roll, I'm gonna make sure I'm like ten oh, feet man. away from someone. Imagine like your party like dives under. Have they a think piece of safe. lead. Like, okay, I'm aiming for the while, back of their head. Leave us alone. Come back up. He's just standing on the surface of the water. <laughs> and throw this all, dude into your time, Halloween campaign, oh, people. I'm able to, your one I shot. Let, out, the, let your I'm party be terrified Bell, as Bell they try to run away off. from this Friday the 13th style oh, menace. And I you know to even just yes, add to I it, am. we got Relentless Nature. Does not need food, drink, or sleep. This creature will hunt you down. <laughs> Try to cast blindness and deafness on this thing. The head is in its hands. That ain't even working. I mean, it's not immune to being blind. <laughs> I will take my dice and leave. Oh, man. So if we get into the attacks here. It does have multi attack, makes three. <laughs> yeah, it's a little <laughs> scary, man. But the other hand makes three spine whip attacks or necrotic bolt attacks. It can replace okay. one attack with the use of seal the doom. Seal the deal. Okay, seal the doom. Work so on my first we got the spine whip, melee weapon attack, plus eight to hit, reach of ten feet. Two d six <laughs> plus four slashing damage, plus three d six necrotic damage. If they target is a creature, must succeed on a DC seventeen con save or fall prone. As it is whacked, racked with pain. All right. <clears throat> Sorry, back. We got Necrotic Bolt is a ranged spell attack, plus seven to hit, range of 120 feet. Is a 4d8 plus three necrotic damage. And then we have Seal the Doom. The Dullahan points at a creature doomed by Deathly Doom. <laughs> that, uh, Deathly Doom was. That's going to be that's gonna be me if I see a headless horseman. Oh, that, where is it? Oh, that was the fear, I believe. Definitely do. Ah. Uh, within 40 feet of it, that it can see the creature must make a DC 17 con save. On a fail, the target immediately drops to zero Empire. if it is below half its maximum HP. On a success, the target is immune to the double hand seal the doom for the next 24 hours. Yeah, Holy listen. shit. And last but not least, we got a bonus action. Oh, here's the Deathly Doom. Okay, okay. Bonus action. Huh. Dullahan magically dooms a creature for one hour. Oh, so this is the, the name calling, so to speak. Okay. You have only okay. one creature doomed at a time. If it dooms another, the effect on the previous target end. The Dullahan knows the direction of the doomed creature as long as both are on the <laughs> same plane of existence. Uh, uh, Sam, Sam, hear me out. Hear me out. Yep. Yep. The party is tasked with protecting mm. someone who is doomed. Mm. The client is doomed. <laughs> they have to keep the. They have to keep oh. this person safe from death himself. For one hour, your party is being hunted by a Dullahan. This can be refreshed. So, like, it you got to keep refreshed. this person safe. Yeah. So, you it, get it, to once, a holy once it location, rolls right up, it can refresh that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can see maybe, like... Uh, like maybe you have to travel from one city to another with this important figure and for some reason this you know Dullahan has marked him you know he's been marked <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> understandably so oh, this man. thing can I ride like after you on water that is so cool yep. menacing yeah, yeah. as fuck and, and you know, respectfully, that's a ten out of ten. We are not fucking with it. <laughs> but I will let you guys know the weakness of a Dullahan is gold. It's gold. It's gold. It's gold. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, come with I, I think that just kind of that changes the context entirely. If the players figure out that the weakness is gold, seeing as mm. most uh, D and D campaigns have too much gold. Yeah, you start throwing money at it. <laughs> One point of bludgeoning damage. A roll for <laughs> no, a roll for intelligence. Put that in your sling. For and smoke it. Liter- yeah. uh, mm-hmm. I can't say it. <laughs> There you go. Boom. Gold sword. Hi, you've heard of silvering your weapons. Ever hear of golding no your weapons? My luck. Absolutely. I would try Look, to that'd be a good reason to literacy add a dollar into a party. One. Maybe somebody's like, huh? Well, I'm going to start doing the research. The only thing I could find is some aversion to gold. Now, suddenly you're like, oh, shit, we got to find I'm gold I'm definitely weapons. doing like, that for the yeah, one. That's, <laughs> that'd be a research thing. But that would give the person be, who's both. got a sling in the party time to shine. <laughs> Because <laughs> that one kobold is suddenly useful. <laughs> yeah, like slings are a surprisingly good hand. weapon. Oh, no one talks about how good slings are. I've never met someone who's used a sling. Yeah, uh, Sam, do you, do you do you know how a sling is made? Made? It's just like yeah, I'm like a, be just like, the uh, most illiterate. Illiterate. Like no, it's, you can literally just like take a couple leather thongs. You take a little uh, little pocket of leather, and then you just like you get it all kind of like balanced out. But yep. literally, you just Take a some. I'm going to be the most of like illiterate lead, metal. I mean, like a rock. You know, rocks. Yeah, rocks, yeah, rocks, rocks are very common. Are. Like this is the web. <laughs> yes, David and Goliath <laughs> is the most famous exactly. use of a sling, and exactly. these things are fucking deadly. You, you can uh, go end far, it, dude. Uh, Straight to at the range. bottom of the like, ocean. Like, bam! You you think throwing a rock at someone is bad? This is am- this is leverage. You are amplifying that. True. So th- this is the equivalent of being uh, stabbed or hit with a fucking hammer like in D, uh, uh your typical hammer does a d4 of damage this is does a d4 of damage at range which doesn't sound like much but the concept that you can improvise your ammo be like okay we're going to take yeah. a couple of uh, gold coins like kind of like uh get them together and d4 boom budget. got them done yeah. i mean even just having that as like an option like to have that extra, you know, now you got two D eight basically, you know, or you know, mm. double the damage on, you know, a D four. Hey, dude, you, you got silver in your illiterate. pocket. You could yeah. uh, take your silver coins, and then you could use those in your sling as ammo against your vampires and your werewolves, and uh, yeah, you, you know, all, all that cool shit that doesn't you like essentially silver. have like a gold bullet, you know, silver bullet. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I kind of want to use a sling on my next character. Slings are kind of cool. Yeah. You have like a, a bag full of like different kind of balls, and you got like brass bearings, silver bearings, gold bearings. <laughs> uh, lead shot's pretty good because lead is really heavy, like That's gold. Iron bearings for like ghosts and shit. Mm, yeah, you you could have everything. Like yeah, okay, we got we got magic ones, we got silver ones, we got Explosive gold ones. Yeah, the, you can go off. Uh, that's what. Yeah, I, yeah. I actually homebrewed a. Uh, uh, there's a type of uh, crossbow that uh, functions the same as a sling, hmm. and it, it's called a stone throw crossbow. So you could literally just take like rocks and stuff, just like a sling, but oh, it would yeah. have better range and more power. So this would be a great reason to have one of those too. You know, hmm. let's hear it. Let's hear it. Mm. Mm. I am definitely using hockey because I I want to go for that mythical zone. Well, I'd allow it. Oh, I'd no. treat it the same as a slingshot. Yeah, but it wouldn't. I, I, my concern would be doing enough damage. Like, there's a damage threshold, right? You can only do so much with this song. I think if you're really good with one, like, uh, base D&D, a sling does a D4 of damage. You know? Yeah, but you're not killing anybody with the D4 damage. Even if you, uh, even if, even if you crit it, sneak attack, like chances well, are you're not killing anybody. Well, the really. thing is with a sling, uh, we we already uh, demonstrated like it. The versatility of ammo is what really mm-hmm. sells it. Yeah, it really really depends on you know you start adding more to the ammo, what your D what your DM is like, you know. Mm. So. 
<laughs> knock the musician out, take his loot. Sorry. I mean, the AC to knock someone out with the sling would be kind of tough. And what's the range of a sling? Like 30 feet, maybe 20 feet? Uh, actually, let's uh, look into it. Actually, I don't know. Sling. <laughs> I'm looking this shit up right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the Roll Twenty Compendium. That that's reliable. So that's a a range of thirty to a hundred and twenty feet. Oh, okay. that's actually surprising. What the heck? <laughs> it's a simple weapon. Anybody can use it. Like I yeah. said, a D four. So it, it's in the same uh, threshold as like daggers and hammers mm -hmm. and you know small end uh, stuff like that. But the versatility of the ammo that you can use and the concept it doesn't count as a, uh, a thrown weapon, right? Um, a thrown weapon no, efficiency and stuff? Would it no, be it's, it? it's just a ranged weapon. It's the range, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Knock them I'm out. I'm getting dude. behind them with that. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> He's going to come to this campaign with a soundboard, people. Oh my God. I, I, I'm oh, down DM. for it. Start I love adding it. soundboard rules to your games right now. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a couple rules for my campaign at, that are more on a meta level. Uh, every player that joins my game, I need to you to it doesn't it doesn't have to be in stream, but I need a, I need you to have a camera so I can see your face because I need to be able to read people. Uh, I've gone too long uh, DMing online games through Roll Twenty and not being able to see the faces of my players to read them, and it it's been a detriment. I feel that I, I can't do it anymore. It's like. It's too much. I, I, I got to be able to look at y'all. So Ryan, <laughs> I think we're doing pretty good on time. We How are. about heading into your Descriptify? What uh, you got for this week? Yeah, there should be well, fun. Well, for this week's Descriptify, we have trepidation. A little Ooh. fun word right there. Now, trepidation means uh, a state of alarm or dread, apprehension. Uh, and it, it could be used to describe someone with like, that's kind of like involuntarily quivering or like trembling, you know, anyone who has anxiety, oh, anxiety man. or fear Me, right now. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. It, you might, if you see a Dullahan, you might experience a state of trepidation. Yeah. You know, and you might have some trepidation towards the entire month of October because <laughs> ghosts and Ghouls and uh, uh, scary shit. Oh spooky, my! Scary yeah. skeletons, you know. All together now, spooky, scary, sc oh, spooky, okay. scary skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that song's too catchy for what it is. Yeah. Right. Oh my god, is that song <laughs> racist now? <laughs> <laughs> it's only as racy as you want it to be. Oh my God, my life has been changed. Tame it. If I if I if I've been liking that song my entire life, am I racist? Uh, sorry, Sam, you have internalized racism. Am I a betrayer? Oh my! Yo, you oh, are a no. betrayer, sir. Sorry. Anyway, so trepidation, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's one of those things where this is a particularly good word if you're trying to portray a character that had an NPC that's got a big vocabulary. Is like mm -hmm. I was like, okay, you want to have uh, these NPCs with the that that ten dollar word set, you know? Mm -hmm. Like what your also, NPCs think... are saying kind of okay. does a lot, you know. It really conveys yeah. uh, their level of intelligence. Mm. Yeah, and it kind of like showing trepidation is like a specific kind of emotion too, and to like display mm. that to somebody shows like mm. a special kind of fear, you know? Yeah. Like, like a troubled kind of fear. Yeah. Like I like I'm deeply worried. Like Exactly. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Yeah, or you could just uh, have a character be like, 
Oh, I do say, I do not, I am not experiencing any qualms or trepidation with the, mm -hmm. with the deal that we have uh, set forth. Uh, all we must do is sign right here. Yes. And <laughs> you, do you have any uh, qualms with the, the deal? No, true. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, make an intelligence check. Oh, yeah. Ah, fuck. Can I make a roll for uh, illiteracy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> you make one too. <laughs> Remember when literacy was an actual, th uh, like, uh, no skill Just, in D and D no. in the sense, like, it. A, it was a feature. Sounds awful. Well, like you, you could choose not to have a literate character and be like, okay, that shows up. Like, oh yeah, and on my sheet, my character is illiterate. <laughs> Your character's gonna be illiterate. Uh, illiterate. Just, oh, actually, man. that could work. You know, some illiterate uh, dude that's uh, from an island. He's just spent Look, his man. whole life hunting squirrels with a sling. Be careful! You don't want to appropriate anybody by you know hey, portraying somebody who's illiterate. Uh, to appropriate is to appreciate. Well, that's what they say. Until you get appropriated, <laughs> could be nearly headless. <laughs> he's up to doing a great it. Start. He's doing he's it. In, oh, he's man. in character. Holy shit! <laughs> he's a method awkward. actor, people. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I can. I know you're gonna do great. <laughs> He's gonna do big things. And Ryan, what's our homebrew for this week? <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the top. Oh, we gotta move into the homebrew. Oh man. Generic realm. Generic realm. Lots of fun. Excellent. Ah, yes, it's always fun in the generic realms. And this week in the generic realms, Sam, I, I have something uh, special to bring to everybody here. We do love that here. And uh, it is the potion uh, pitcher feed. Nice. Uh, brought to us by the Goose Quill. There, I got that set up on screen there. I don't know if you can see that, Sam, but I can't read uh, well, I'll read it for you. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I've, I'm already been alert. Hey, wait a minute. Is this the... Wait a, who made the art for this? Wait a minute. Uh, I like let's this. Let's see. This also the reminds artwork... me of, like, uh, oh, Legends yeah. of Rune Terra, if anybody plays that. Oh, yeah, th this shit <laughs> looks great. Uh, yeah, the artwork really is by uh, Jelena Kevick. Uh, I can't I pronounce like that last one, so I'm not... I'm going to oh, try. Uh, Dejur Devik? Dejur Devik. Well, oh, we are our literate. Look at this next one. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't mean to make fun of your names. Krish <laughs> uh, Chris, uh, Chris Kinter. Uh, uh, this is clearly like uh, some kind like of uh, like Russian German area kind of names. Yeah, yeah. All right, go no, on. No, no. Well, whoever y'all are and however you say your names, this is some great stuff. I I, I like it. Oh, this like, seems like something that would work really well for like like uh, oh, th this character is just beautiful to look at. I love like all this little potion things. They're just kind of this is definitely a I would take for my plague doctor. Oh, absolutely! And if someone wants to use this in my game, they absolutely can because I allow uh, feats from any part of Five E because this is going to be a Five E campaign. Oh, read what it does. Well, yeah, everybody gets to start uh, with uh, either a uh, devil through a uh, hockey or a feat of their choice. I think I'm going to just pick a feat. Wait, what's a hockey? What the hell is uh, hockey? Hockey is a, it, it's like chi. Okay. Gotcha. So, gotcha. but going into the potion pitcher feat, yeah, uh, yeah. I'll read it off here. You have learned to create specialized vials that allow you to use potions or poisons on creatures from a distance. As a result, you gain the following benefits. You gain proficiency with alchemist supplies. Using alchemist supplies, you can transform a number of potions or poisons equal to your proficiency bonus 
into splash potions over the course of a long rest. Splash mm. potions may be thrown at a target within 40 feet using a bonus action. If the target is unwilling to receive the effects of the splash potion, you must make an attack roll to hit them with the splash potion. Holy shit. Sorry, I just had an idea. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm almost done. The yeah, splash yeah. potion has a normal range of 20 feet and a long range of 40 feet, which you are considered proficient with. The attack roll uses the de your dexterity modifier. This, go, go ahead. This is an amazing healer. Yes. This, like, this turns like, like a cleric into like an amazing healer. <laughs> nah, nah, dude, this lets a normal, like non-caster, it lets a marshal be like, what bam, yeah. what bam. Like, imagine oh. being a fighter and you use your action surge to yeah. just throw out like, like an AOE greater healing potion. Like, oh my God. It's dude, crazy. Uh, you use, uh, like, imagine using your, uh, your bonus action, your, your action surge. And like, like, say you have like a potion in each hand, like your, your whole thing is like dual wielding. So you're like, dual bam, wielding bam, bam, bam. you're just like, everybody gets healing. Like you're fucking Oprah. You know what? What's really funny. Okay. So I try not to reference all the books that I talk about all the time, you know, but one of my favorite ones, he who fights with monsters, right? They have, uh, Alchemists, you know, like combat okay. alchemists. Ah, there. Uh, that's a better spot for it on our screen. Yeah. So, so they have uh, people who you know choose to fight as like a combat alchemist, and they kind of do this exact thing where they'll throw potions, they'll throw poisons, they'll ingest their concoctions and mutate themselves. You know, give themselves like buffs and stuff like that. So you know what? This this could go crazy. <laughs> I love it. I love it's it. fantastic. It's, it's simple cool. and it opens you up to a lot. I did talk to uh, this person about coming on the show. So a goose quill? Uh, yeah, the goose quill it lives in Europe. So in a couple weeks, we're going to have goose quill on the show. And that's going to be a 4 p.m. show for us because mm -hmm. uh, time difference. It's like we've had we usually have to. Uh, you know, adjust for our European guests because the nerd mm -hmm. militia is friends to the European, apparently. Like, yes, yes. Like, Though we both guests from all reside over. in the uh, eastern United States. <laughs> yeah, so th this will be fun. This will be big. Yeah. Ah. I give I give this this homebrew uh, five out of five. Five or two, you know, five d twenties out of five. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I will gladly uh, concur with that. I like it. It's it's as good as your character is creative. Mm -hmm. And like we didn't do an IRL fight score for the Dulahan for a reason. Ain't nobody fighting that shit. You want to pick I a fight with death. You're getting fucking wrecked. You're dead. You're yeah, dead. yeah. Done. Like <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't I couldn't fight that if I tried. Yeah, no. <laughs> no normally, we like to do the IRL fight score on the show, but. Mm -hmm. the, there is, are certain an, monsters that you just get fucked. It, this is an omen of death. They come, they take your soul, they leave. Like, <laughs> there's no real. Like, there's no fighting back. Honestly, probably not. I mean, unless you're a D and D character, and then you can fight back. <laughs> uh, maybe or, one of these days we'll have like a polywog for the monster of the week, and we can be like, "Oh, hey, frog legs, let's go." Yeah, and eventually, we'll talk about something that's not, you know, uh, agent of chaos. <laughs> but, you know alternatively you know instead of fighting a dullahan for my homebrew what if you played one what if you oh. became a dullahan or what if you you know were born a uh tell us about it i have it pulled up on screen for right. the viewers so thanks to the dm's binder for checking this out by zekis 720 hell yeah so the history of the dullahan oh, should i read all of it yeah okay i'll read all of it a Dullahan is a type of fake creature born from the unseely court. Dullahan resemble undead due to their headlessness, <laughs> but both <laughs> head and body are kept alive by a fake curse, inclined to travel by unseely magic. And by their own appearance, grim folklore sprung up about them over time. Dullahan are created by unseely fae when they decapitate a humanoid, often as part of a dark ritual. Newly created Dullahan are able to retain most of their personality of their humanoid self, Memories of their past life is mostly forgotten. Only a few Dullahan manage to remember a memory from their past life, 
often due to a trigger or a lasting impression the body will never forget. Dullahan are also capable of producing offspring, the newborn in question becoming undoubtedly a Dullahan's characteristics of the dominant race from both partners. So they can become a natural species, their own kind of, you know, beings, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Reading of Dullahan is not something that I kind of thought of. <laughs> I, I mean, come on. If you, the IRL fight score that we have given this thing is clearly states that you are fucked if one shows up. So clearly breeding is the only way out of a situation. They do, they do be fucking, apparently. <laughs> so speaking of, you know, them be fucking, since they resemble most normal humanoids so strongly, most Dullahan are fully capable of integrating themselves into society, more so than most tieflings, half-orcs, and Dullahans who resemble tieflings and half-orcs. Mm. Interesting. Huh. Huh. <laughs> the differences they do possess are minimal until their headless nature is exposed. Showing their headlessness in public is viewed as off-putting. <laughs> Just off-putting. Sometimes Delahanna compared to undead, viewed negatively to holy places and organizations. Other times monster hunters or guards get called to the scene of the misunderstanding of Delahan. Okay, so they try to give them their own kind of they are a you know, a species all their own. They're just people, you know, like yourselves. Just happen. They to be just headless. lost their head. I'd lose they're mine just, if it wasn't a. Just happen to be headless. <laughs> you know, we don't need this headless prejudice. You know, against them. Okay. Yeah, but, you, you know. know <laughs> a side stop, effect of being a stop headless hate. <laughs> you know, the side effect of being topless and we're just talking with their head. <laughs> <laughs> the side Go effect ahead. of being topless. <laughs> Dullahan have a built-in instinct to fear gold as a countermeasure by the unsealed court to control them in the Fae. In the mm. material plane, while no one controls Dullahan, their feebleness to gold is distracting, even harmful. Despite the downside, many Dullahan circumvent payment problems by asking to be paid in valuable gemstones, even platinums. Of course, they are also... There are organizations that hunt Dullahan out of fear or ideals. I'd, Likely aware of the race's weakness and use gold plated weapons to effectively and efficiently kill Dullahan. Hmm. You could end a Dullahan with uh, some uh, gold, uh, bra some gold uh, knuckle dusters, you know? Oh, boom, yeah. Boom. <laughs> this is interesting. You know, having their charisma increased by two and have one ability score of the choice increased by one. That's not probably not what I would choose, but you. Because I wonder if they are mainly casters and if they become, you know, like a like a charisma caster, like a like a sorcerer, I believe, a charisma caster, well, something like that. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. So we have age. Whenever they were killed or or created by dark magic or born to reproduction, Delahan matured the same rate as humans, but live far longer and stop aging. The other hand, that were born become adults when they reach 20 years. They can live for 300. Okay, alignments make sense. They can okay, be so they got a good lifespan. I believe death comes equally to everybody at their own pace. Okay, so being neutral is pretty normal, like you said. Well, yeah, that, that's just where things kind of go to when I think about it. Ah, so, inherited attributes. Oh, yeah, you were going to say? No, go ahead. Uh, oh. I just think that this person that uh, made this homebrew oh. seems to share some uh, views with me on that. He's like, okay, cool. Yeah, for sure. So we have inherited attributes. Determine the race you are in life or born into life. You have that race's size, base walking speed, and languages. And for all intents and purposes, you still resemble that race. Okay, you so get, this uh, could double down on the racial flavor. Exactly. You get... Uh, Dark vision, 60 feet. You cannot discern color in darkness, only shades of gray. Your creature type is fey rather than humanoid. You have frightening persuasion. Oh, I understand. Your proficiency in either the intimidation or persuasion skill. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and then you have unseely magic. You know, the toll of the dead cantrip. Once you reach third level, you can cast fine steed once per long rest. 
Mount Conjure is considered a fey creature. Additionally, the steed can be dismissed into your shadow as an action. Acting as a pocket dimension from a fine familiar spell can be retreated as a bonus action. Once you reach 5th level, you can cast Knock once per long rest. And Charisma is your spellcasting ability for these spells. <laughs> so, once per long rest, Bok locks. Who needs them? You're right, right. Oh, and we also have the, you know, naturally the headless feet. Your head and body are separated. The wound that separated them is permanently scarred, and you gain the following effects. Ooh. You can attach and detach your head using your object interaction. Your ability to <laughs> sever your head prevents you from being killed by the tapitation. However, being struck by a critical hit with a weapon attack or unarmed strike causes your head to fly off. Your head lands in space. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you always know the distance and direction <laughs> to your head. Yeah. <laughs> it just makes me think, of, you ever see that show? It was on like PBS when I was a kid. Uh, it was called Seven Little Monsters. And uh, each of the monsters had like, yes, you know, Lord of Ring knows what I'm talking about. And uh, each of the monsters was named after a number. Yeah, yeah. And seven. Oh, real his... monsters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so his... uh. His head would like unscrew and he would lose his head all the time. And he'd right. be like, oh, oh wh wh where's my uh, hey body over here? And it's just like, oh, yeah. that's oh, I lost monsters. my head. <laughs> I remember this show. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah it, was, it was neat, you know? Mm -hmm. Hey, dog. <laughs> <laughs> So we also have, unless your head is being carried by your body or another creature, it can be targeted. It's AC being equal to yours, but without the benefit of dexterity or armor, that does not include a helmet. That cannot be damaged twice by an area of effect due to this. Your head automatically fails dexterity saving throws. When separate, your body can see and hear so long as your head can see the body. If your head's vision is obscured, the body gains 10 feet of blind sight. Wow. That's interesting. Huh. It is. Hmm. So you could you could effectively throw your vision around corners. <laughs> you could. Okay. So if you're a if you take this race and you take hold it out. <laughs> no, no, just, you, you, bare minimum, you get mage hand, and you can hold your head. In yes. Your mage, oh. yes. Yes. You can hold your head in your mage hand because the average Ooh, head the guy weighs about as much as a bowling ball, and hand. the average bowling ball is less than ten pounds unless you're yeah. doing one of those bigger bowling balls. So you could have your head in your hand and just float it around. I believe a head is about what eight pounds, something like that. Yes, that yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, that's crazy. And your headless body cannot speak, but it can consume food and drink as well as cast spells. I remember that. Even spells with verbal components, as long show. as the separated head is not silenced or gagged. Mm. that's really good. along with so Cat dog and all those other shows let's say you got like bound right you could like detach your head <laughs> and, like i don't know that's kind of interesting Ooh. there's also a weakness it comes to with the feet yeah comes with the feet so before we get to that real quick we got the weakness to gold you have okay, vulnerability okay. to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from gold-plated weapons. If you are carrying or touching anything made of gold, make a DC 15 con save or release the item. That's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and it, you do have a racial feat, transplant consciousness. Now, that already, like, I'm mm. drawn in. Yeah. So I think this is the last but not least on this page. The body of Adullahan is a mysterious curse that remains with plenty of secrets for one to manipulate and discover. One such ability mm. has to become someone else entirely. Over the course of 30 minutes, you perform a ritual to bind yourself to a head within five feet of you. The ritual will end if you move more than five feet away from the head. You can bind two multiple heads equal to your charisma modifier, not including your own head. Oh mm. my god. If you attempt to bind to a new head that exceeds your maximum limit, you can choose to break a binding to one of your existing heads, not including your own head. Okay. You can okay, only bind right. to a head if its size and sex is the same as yours. By completing the ritual, the head no longer decomposes while you are bound to it and gains the following features. You can spend 30 minutes to transfer your consciousness to a different head. You can do this during a short rest if applicable. Doing so changes the skin's 
The head skin is pigment, eye, and hair color to match your existing body and head. Huh. Alternatively, you can choose for your body to match the pigment of the current head. Oh, this you have like a, a very disguise. Advanced, this is a very advanced disguise self. Interesting. You gain insight into the general characteristics of the head's life, allowing you to mimic the person in both voice and mannerisms. You gain advantage on charisma. Oh my God, I understand everything now. Move aside, oh. changelings, you've been replaced. Holy shit. You just have a bag full of heads. You're like, oh, I'm going to be a policeman today. <laughs> <laughs> you got to like, hey, that's oh. actually a good use for that spell that you can use to stop things from decomposing. Yeah, true. You'd have to spam it, but damn, like that'd be a, that's a whole lot right there. That's interesting. What an interesting way to do that. I like that a lot. Actually. Imagine being able to change your class based on the head that you're using. Oh my god, if only. You know what? It, I I might allow it if a if a character made a compelling argument. That'd be tough. I'd say you could have like a oh. couple. And like you have like only until the heads decompose. Like mm. And that's heavily dependent on the heads that you have. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be like, I'd probably, and I would probably say, like, you can't have any more. Like, if you find a way to preserve, like, up to, like, three or whatever, you can have, like, three. And then, like, no more. Yeah. But, you know. I would purposely de decapitate a boss. Yeah. Just, yeah, he'd be like, oh, man, I want to, you start collecting heads, Neferet would have a ball. Oh, yeah, Neferet would love this shit. Uh, <laughs> so let's just. Let's game. see what we got here for who put this together. We got like a whole credit section. Oh, yes, yes, a whole credits. Let's click on this again. All right, close the link. So we got Zekas for fine tuning out of personal touches. Got Cat Eon on Reddit for creating the idea and traits. Jester Masquerade nice. on Reddit for offering a new perspective. We got Lucas Massetti, creator of the artwork below. Oh. Right, okay check cool them. check him out thank you and... to everybody who worked on this we like it a lot <laughs> they gave credit for offering a new perspective i like yeah. that what always give credit where it's due guys always honestly if they really like had an impact into you creating this fuck yeah love to hear honestly it. what that is all i have for today fair enough yeah, I. That's all I got. Uh, we didn't really have uh, too much for the the news outside of some drama this week. We already covered all of that. Yeah. Uh, well, I found out I'm going to New Hampshire ooh. next week for work. What do you do? do? <laughs> so, for the people and the listeners, where can they find you, Lord? <clears throat> if they want to hit you up. So f on Twitch, it's just Ring J60. I'm still new at, new at it, but I haven't figured out how to be able to keep the uh, videos on my Twitch. Mm. And for YouTube, hang on. Are you bound by any contracts to only stream with Twitch? Because uh, I can help you on the multi streaming side. Yes. And they're like. Oh, Ryan has said earlier, I will be appearing in some of our parodies. Yes. So I'm looking forward to putting those out. Going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we got the Wellerman parody. Yeah, we, That's going to be we good. We at least got to come out with uh, at least I actually have a whole one backlog parody of D&D parody songs. Christmas. So Just one. Looking forward Christmas. to having those come out sometime this year which not too many months left in the year. So got to get cracking on that one. Um, pretty much. If you have, if you have, if you haven't subscribed to the Just nerd one. militia, go but do it right we, now. I have a really Smash good one. Like so button. here's hoping. And uh, also, is there anything uh, you want to leave the D &D listeners fan with? And you want people to be, uh, want to be able to play with other people. Final thoughts. Hop on, download <laughs> discord, join, join, the nerd militia oh. <laughs> and become one of the family. Mm. One of us. One of us. <laughs>